Hey, how's it going? Let's just hop into today's exhausting journey. It's a very long video. We need to get on with it. We're going to pull up the, the list here of the bottom six Pokemon in terms of stat total. And I've shown this list before, but let's just recap, soak it in. Caterpie, Metapod, Kakuna, Magikarp, they can't beat the game. Struggles of normal type move in Generation 1. Pokemon Tower would be impossible because they cannot get past the Gastly's. While Weedle is technically possible, it does have to rely on the pathetic Poison Sting for the entirety of the game, and it can not learn any TMs, and in my opinion, it may as well be impossible because I'm never going to do it. Number six on the list is the titular protagonist of today's video, and there's no sugarcoating it here. Zubat on paper looks incredibly awful in every measurable metric for a solo run. Bad stats? You got it. Shallow move pool with few redeeming qualities? Check. Weak against the strongest typing in the game? Double check. Weak initial moves that's going to make the start of the game very slow? You fucking know it. Problematic toppings that will make the Elite Four difficult? <laughs> yes, of course. And it goes without saying that this one will not be exactly a fun walk in the park, but I got it as a request and I generally honor those requests when you guys tell me what you want. But before we dive in, I do Pokemon challenges about once a week ago, so if you are new to the channel and this sounds like it's of interest to you, consider subscribing to stay up to date on my videos. It really helps me out. Likes and comments also help out. They get me into that dreaded YouTube algorithm. So if you're someone that usually just never interacts with the videos. I'm gonna just pose a question this week. Do you guys think that Zubat will be the very bottom of the tier list when today's episode is over? And just give me a yes or no in the comments. You can tell me why you think that. Whatever you want. Yes or no will do. But I'll know what you're talking about. And I can say that this was a very interesting experience. So with that said, relax. You might want to grab yourself a six pack of Sody Pops this week because we're sitting here for like an hour. And let's just embrace the badness together in today's solo run. Like always, I give our no-eyed boy good IVs, and this week's name is Succula. It's like Dracula, except it sucks. Do you get it? And right from the start, we need to talk about Zubat. All the way up to level 15, we will be utilizing Leech Life. While I can say that Leech Life can have niche uses against some poison and psychic types early in the game, it's just not a great move. It has a very weak 20 base power, and it doesn't even get the same type attack bonus, and when you couple that with having a low attack stat and only having 15 power points, then things can quickly become a bit of a struggle, and we are speaking both figuratively and literally with that statement. I do win the first rival battle, but that's only because of excessive tail whips, and even in this battle, I burned through about 70% of Leech Life's power points, just to give you a little idea of what's coming up. It gets to the point early where the first optional bug catcher you fight with a simple Weedle and Caterpie is enough to deplete all of my PP in that single battle and force me to use struggle strats. Leech Life is efficient enough against the Weedle because it's weak to it, but against things like Caterpie, the damage is especially weak and you just get a glimpse of how this early game is going to start to go. And struggle strategies are definitely faster, it's just that at these early levels and with such poor stat total, you really can't keep it up for that long. I go ahead and I finish up the mandatory bug catcher so that I can freely go back and forth to the Poke Center, and I'm just trying to figure out the fastest way I can take on Brock, which is looking like it's it's going to be a huge wall in our current state. Eventually I start picking up all the trainers I can and that means it's the optional rival fight time and this one is specifically awful. Leech Life is resisted and it looks like it would take about 430 of them to take out the Pidgey. It's not even close. I miserably fail one time and that's just enough for me to call it quits right there and from there I'm in a conundrum. I start wondering if maybe grinding the, the Vertatas would be the way to go because honestly I'm feeling extremely weak to the point that the Viridian Force doesn't feel efficient at all. It's honestly a bad feeling and something that's kind of new in these solo runs. We've had bad starts, but this one's feeling exceptionally bad. At level 10, you learn Supersonic, and this actually hurts you more than it helps. It's a 55% accurate coin flip that just gives you that 50-50 chance at self-inflicting damage. You know what confusion does. But it's essentially 20 useless power points that's in the way of struggling. And this battle right here with a Metapod is everything you need to know about how bad Zubat's early game is. I 
enter the fight with about 10 leech lives, and it's not enough to take it out since I'm so weak. And then from there I have to start exhausting Supersonic so that I can actually get to struggle. And thankfully in this clip it does hurt itself, it saves me about 13 more turns. But this is how a lot of battles feel unfortunately. Very slow, you feel very useless. I tried lots of things at this point. Time is just racking up, and I give about half a dozen attempts at the two remaining trainers. The rival battle feels like it could potentially be possible with some really good luck, but the junior trainer just seems really far off. I'm wandering around, and I'm already swiftly approaching an hour. It's kind of early in the video, but my goal is already kind of seeming like it's just going to be to not be worse than the Cubone run, which is an incredibly low bar to say the least. At level 12, I decide I'm going to give Brock a try, and I'm being nice, I'm being hopeful, I'm being positive, and maybe there's something I'm not seeing. Maybe it's one of those situations where I can't see the forest for the trees, but the crushing reality is that it's really bad. 15 power points of leech life wouldn't even be enough to take out Geodude, and getting it to half health is the best accomplishment that Zubat can hope to achieve in this situation. At this stage, it's looking like it's going to be like a three hour Brock time if things keep progressing at this pace. Things are getting urgent and my only course of action is to spend all of my money and pick up some future items as well as some potions. The fastest thing possible for me right now is to stay in the struggle strategies as long as possible to make grinding that much faster. Just eating that recoil damage and then using a potion to heal it hopefully will be much more efficient and can save me some time. I do it for a little bit and when I'm getting close to depleting my potions, I return to the optional rival fight. And I can't say that I have some in-depth strategy here. The idea is that I'm just going to struggle and I'm going to hope the level difference and the damage from struggle is enough just to brute my force way through it. And I'm actually surprised this worked on the first attempt considering how many times I failed earlier. But even with things going my way, I still get down to 5 HP. I barely survive. But I need every small victory that I can get in this run because my self-esteem is at an all-time low playing Zubat. I need to get to level 15 desperately and here we get kind of a solo run first for me now you've heard of just widing out on the elite four to keep the experience i do that sometimes but welcome to that strategy but on the junior trainer i can consistently beat diglett and it gives me a decent 190 experience which is the equivalent of about five metapods which honestly takes a lot of time to find and defeat and it's not like i can even beat the censure anyway but doing this getting taken out rinse and repeat getting that 190 experience felt honestly pretty fast Kind of to the point where I wonder why I've never done this strategy on other slow Brock runs. I would need to test this more, but I might be onto something. I don't know. We'll see in the future. And I do this all the way up to level 15, and then I learn Bite. Bite isn't a remarkable move, but for Zubat, it's about the equivalent of going from minimum wage up to $40 an hour. I try my best to still let the Sentry defeat me so I can keep repeating this, but Zubat just simply cannot be contained anymore at this point. Filled with a renewed sense of purpose to be better than Cubone. I give Brock an attempt at level 15 to see how things have improved. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's definitely better. I went from a good attempt being taking the Geodude to half health to being able to actually make it to the Onyx, and that's pretty promising. I continue grinding. I get to level 17. I don't expect anything from Zubat, but honestly I might have shed a little tear in this battle. Casual observers might simply say that I got a little luck here and there, but I say that Zubat's heart carried this battle. There's really no need to dive into deep detail about every single turn, but some opportunistic flinches from Bite actually make this fight go shockingly quick. Just look at this attempt, soak in the footage. Zubat takes Brock over its frail little legs and spanks those cheeks, and then gets me my first badge way faster than anticipated. I honestly thought I would be here until my 20s, maybe even level 25, judging from the earlier struggles, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, but this whole point was to show how Zubat just dominated. It was kind of crazy. And I know that the first part of the game drug on a little bit. Trust me, I know, I lived it in real time, I did it. And if you were wondering, Zubat saves after Brock at 1 hour and 49 minutes, and that's not even the worst Brock time I've had, it's kind of surprising. And that ends our first story arc for our little bat protagonist. If this journey was a roller coaster, the Brock section of the game was a slow ascent, slowly creaking up to the peak of the ride, and after we got bite and we completed Brock, the next bit of the game is that easy free fall section of the ride after the initial fear of heights is over with. And dare I say that things are actually easy for a while. I battle all the trainers before Mount Moon, and I take on several optional battles inside that aren't hikers to save a little bit of time. And overall, things just go very smooth all the way up to Cerulean. And once I'm there, I immediately challenge Misty. Subit has an excellent matchup here, and things go great. The main thing to touch on is that I learned Confuse Ray at level 21. It's a 
100% accurate confuse inducing move and it's one of the few redeeming qualities about Zubat. Sure it's a coin flip but at least it gives me some sort of crowd control and at least a chance to avoid damage. Starmie in general always has that potential just to crit you and end the battle but Confuse Ray does wonders as well as Leech Life to get back a little bit of HP and do super effective damage and that gets this fight down fairly quick. That's two badges down. Next up is rival number two and Pidgeotto is always an annoyance. Confuse Ray is a must here and although it doesn't work on the first turn it only goes for gust it eventually does hurt itself and combined with some bites it goes down easy enough the rest of this fight is just using bite for some heavy damage using leech life to restore some health and overall we're just kind of cruising along and it's got me feeling more confident i see you zubat the route to bill's house isn't worth showing and let's just pick up at the ssn as a change of pace i do battle some extra optional trainers i never normally do and i actually pick up the tm for rest here because i'm not quite sure what we might need later and this is your only chance to get it. I also get the rare candy but then it's time for rival number three and this fight is very similar to rival number two but we have yet another new toy to play with since the last time. Zubat has learned wing attack and while it's not the most impressive move, a 35 base power move that gets stabbed and can hit future ghost type battles is pretty nice overall. When your moveset is as limited as Zubat's is, it's pretty easy to get excited about mediocre things. Now let's come back down to reality just a little bit. We've been riding that high from that quick Brock fight for a while and Zubat and I have been strutting around Kanto but Lieutenant Surge is here to put an end to that. The first attempt starts out pretty well but I get paralyzed and then when I make it to the Raichu I get a Thunderbolt and that's enough to kill my entire Zubat family line. And I start failing a lot here and I even go back and I battle the trainers in the gym to see if that extra little bit of experience will help and after about half a dozen failures I'm thinking I'm just gonna come back later but eventually I just I have a breakthrough. And this is the magic of Confuse Ray. I get Thunderbolted down to 7 HP on turn 1, and then I just use Confuse Ray. Raichu hurts itself 2 straight turns, and then I bite it, and I take it down, and I just win a battle I had no business of winning. But that's just how it goes sometimes, guys. No Texies backsies, you know? And from there, I do something that only struggling runs do. I go to Diglett Cave, and I exhaust all of my remaining power points just to get that sweet stat experience for speed, on top of maybe finishing off a level or two. The idea is that this will help me in the future. Maybe if I'm a little bit slower, maybe I'll be faster now and get off that Confuse Ray. We'll see how it pays off. A small thing that did kind of impress me is that I didn't have to sacrifice my dig back to Cerulean to save time like I usually do. From how the game started, you would think that you would definitely have to heal in Vermilion, but I didn't have to and that's pretty good for Zubat. Rock Tunnel wasn't too bad, but we are quickly going to watch the Hiker with a double Geodude and the Graveler because somebody might be curious. I have a pretty big level advantage and that just kind of carries the fight. I guess if they all use Self Destruct, maybe I'd be saying something different right now, but only the last Graveler does and I just tank it. That's it. Now let's pick back up Enceladon. I run the usual errands, but I do pick up a Pokey Dodge just to make sure I can get Mimic for the future of the run. With Zubat's typing, it just makes sense to take on Erica first before anything else. I battle all of her underling trainers and then I take her on. This is another example of a premium easy battle overall and it's probably Zubat's easiest main fight in the game. Wing attack is super effective and I could even use Leech Life. It's double super effective against some of them but I don't really need it. I also double resist grass and that just means I slice through this fight with ease and we get another badge down. The important part here is getting access to Mega Drain. The rocket hideout is next and it would help but I do decide not to use it just yet. I'm I'm very hesitant to use my TM since my move pool is so limited and honestly I just don't know what I'm going to use yet. Inside of the rocket hideout there's another decent TM to consider. Double Edge has a massive 100 base power and I do pick that up just in case I need that extra little punch later in the game. Now let's take a look at the first Giovanni fight and remember Mega Drain would make this fight very easy but I'm being kind of dumb, I'm hesitating and I don't want to use my TMs. From the footage this fight looks extremely rough and it looks like it's just basically over over on the first onyx but somehow I'm actually able to hang on I leech a little health back and I get some key confusion procs to avoid any damage and I actually just end up taking the fight at low HP on my very first attempt and that's always good I love it we love to see it 
Pokemon Tower is the last place we can go, and of course that means rival number 4, everyone's favorite confidence boost. At this stage, Zubat's medium fast leveling group is putting us about at Eevee levels, and we had to be about as high as possible in that run to get to the Ghastlies, and it's definitely made things easy, and that's what I want to see after what was definitely the worst pre-Brock grind to date. Overall, this fight's easy, I don't need to tell you guys that, and you can probably tell from the fact that I haven't really talked about the battle happening in the background. I'm not necessarily one-shotting every Everything, but bites and wing attacks still get it done while I barely take any damage and that's that. And I'll just talk about Ghastly's briefly. I do have Leech Life and I do believe it's actually neutral damage despite the game saying it's super effective because of Gen 1 coding. But even then you can just see how little it does. I'm still just hanging on to it in the moveset but I believe it's pretty much next to useless at this stage in the game. I just end up using wing attacks and it does way more damage but the TLDR of what I'm trying to say is that I don't have problems dealing with damage to ghost types. I finish up the tower, I pick up the Poke Flute, and then I grab the final HMs of the run down in Fuchsia. And my friends, this is where the fairy tale of our post-Brock honeymoon phase starts to crumble just a little bit. We don't need to talk about Koga just yet, but in general we really haven't discussed Succulus psychic weakness outside of one sentence in the intro, but uh, here we start to not only get a taste, but actually a whole bowl full of how that's going to work out. The long and the short of it is that it doesn't. It doesn't work out. Even with something like the Drowsy that you outlevel, you can only survive a single confusion and the second one will take you out. Leech Life is very weak and it doesn't do near enough damage despite being super effective and it all just kind of boils down to Confuse Ray, hoping that you can avoid the damage to get past and the fact that most of these trainers do have multiple Pokemon make this part a nightmare. I try the optional trainers and when that doesn't go well, I do try the actual mandatory trainers and that just goes poorly as well. At this point, Leech Life has ran its course. I've given it enough chances and we need to see what Double Edge can do. I'm not excited about the recoil damage, but the options that Zubat have are just really limited and we have to see what this does. I still get absolutely blasted and it's not a great solution and I still lose just the same. Double Edge does decent damage, but I'd need to have lots of more levels before it's just gonna one shot everything. Just look at the first battle that I actually win here. It's 100% pure luck. The juggler does an early swap, Kadabra out speeds, he blows off one of my wings with a confusion. I mistakenly go for a confuse ray, but it's no harm no foul, and double edge can one shot it, but the recoil damage while I'm already low just isn't great, and I'm able to get really lucky on the drowsy, it hurts itself, and I can make it through. Eventually I do take out the rest of the trainers in the gym, but I lose several more times in other battles, but it's important to note that this is the part of the game where the threads start to unravel a little bit for Zubat. Now let's dive into Koga, but at the very very end of the first attempt, Weezing gets an X attack and with that boost, self destruct just quickly in that attempt. It does take me a few more turns to get past this one and you would think that this would be a great matchup because I resist poison, not only that, I'm just straight up immune to poison, I can't be poisoned. I do rage reset once because of smog and minimize making me roll my eyes in the back of my head missing every single turn, but essentially it always boiled down to how much health I have and can I survive a self destruct. Eventually I'm able to get a key confusion proc and a double edge does finish off this fight and the really annoying part here was that my B button just decided not to work, my Zubat evolves. I had this problem a lot in my first solo runs I've done on the channel, but that's been a long time ago. I remapped the B button to a trigger button and it really hasn't been a problem, but Zubat just wanted to, to flare up this problem again so I had to try the fight again. It ends up taking me four more attempts to get past it, but I'm not going to show those attempts because I'm just I'm pissed off looking at it. Now it's time for Silfco and there's really not that many easy battles left in the game and you can probably guess a couple of those. I don't do too many extra battles at first and I just go straight to rival number five to see where I'm standing and to see if I can maybe salvage a little bit of time. And there's really only one thing to say about this fight. Sure I can make my way past the Pidgeot, the Growlithe, and the Execute with relative ease but we all know what the problem is. Alakazam outspeeds me and he just bends me over and obliterates me and I'm sure I could just reset and with enough attempts I could pick up some luck but there are several more run-ins with Alakazam. I'm gonna need some help. I might as well go get the levels. And that means grinding 
every single trainer in the building to see how much of a difference that makes. If I need more, I guess I have some other options, but I'd rather not do that. This gets me to level 52, and let's see how it kind of shakes out now. You've seen the sped up footage from the first attempt, but let's quickly go over the first few Pokemon. Pidgeot's not too bad. It can do some heavy damage if you get unlucky, but with confusion and some solid neutral damage, it generally wasn't ever that bad. The Growlithe is probably the weak link of the team. It can do some minor chip damage, and in the best case scenario, it'll just go for Roar and it'll just go down painlessly. Execute is generally annoying. It can put statuses on you, but we actually have Wing Attack here. It does super effective damage. It's not quite enough for a one shot, but I do get put to sleep for a bit and it sets up Reflect, and that's not the greatest outcome that you want to see, but let's just keep it going. And now for the Alakazam, and there's useful information in here. At level 52, I can now outspeed it. That's great. I hit a Confuse Ray. It hits itself, but since the Execute got off a of Reflect, that means that it does survive. Then it doesn't hit itself. Sidebeam crits us, and that just adds a little salt in the wound. And now the main problem is the Execute. It being able to supplement the Alakazam, get off a of Reflect, just makes the fight pretty much impossible. I get put to sleep, and I just see the writing on the wall. I reset here to save some time. And after another time or two, I get a great Execute attempt. Confusion lets me avoid the Reflect being set up, and I'm able to just get it down without anything lingering going into the Alakazam, but I still need some luck here. I throw caution to the wind. I tell Zubat that it's now or never, son. I go for a Hail Mary double edge, but the Alakazam just cheats on me. It adds an ability sturdy to itself and it survives at 1 HP. It goes for a side beam, but miraculously I actually survive and I'm able to actually finish it off this attempt. I'm really low though. And at this point, I need a miracle just to survive the Blastoise and that's just not gonna happen. I give it the old college try, but it's not enough. I fell once again, but making it to the Blastoise has me feeling kind of decent. And from there, I'm not going to take any more chances with Double Edge failing to knock out the Alakazam. So I do what the most desperate of runs like Eevee has to do, and I resort to fighting the fake fighting gym. One level should do it. I have Wing Attack. It makes all this grinding super easy. At the end, he does offer me one of the Hitmons as a trophy, but I just spit in his face and I strut out with Succula. My first attempt back at rival number five goes awful. I get chipped down, fairly low just from the Pidgeot and the Growlithe, despite being stronger now. And the cherry on top is that Execute gets off a Reflect, and from that point I just concede the match. Let's hope that this attempt was just an anomaly. The next attempt, my HP isn't too bad, but once again it's Reflect, it's Hypnosis, and it's just another concession on my part. And you might wonder why I don't just play it out and see what happens, but you have to understand that Reflect just halves physical damage for the rest of the fight, and that's all I have. I'm already weak, it's already a struggle just to get past even if things are perfect, so there's just no point. It does take a few times, but eventually I get the fight that Zubat needs once again. I need Execute to hurt itself or go for a Hypnosis and miss, and that's what happens. Nothing is interesting here, but I need to kind of set up this narrative so you guys can see the, the steps of what needs to happen. Now comes in the Alakazam. I'm at pretty good health. Double Edge was a close call last time, and with the extra level, it is in fact enough to one-shot it, and that's fantastic. At level 52, it could have been a range, but I just didn't want to risk it. Blastoise is last, and in this specific fight, it's not too much of a powerhouse to worry about. It's kind of just a neutral matchup. We exchange some turns, it hurts itself in confusion, and I end up getting a crit to finish it all. And overall, this is just kind of your typical rival number 5 fight for some non-elite pre-evolved runs, and it wasn't really that bad. There was a clear win condition from the start, but I did have to go grind pretty much everything around me. But now let's just peek in at Giovanni number 2. This fight's never really that interesting, but once once again, I'd like to reiterate that Mega Drain definitely would have made the fight faster, but I'm really conflicted on what my final moveset's gonna be. I'm not sure if it's gonna be needed, and I'm just trying to do things with what I got with as long as I can without using any TMs. I get through the first attempt, and the Rhyhorn is still a hassle without Mega Drain, but I'm still able just to weave through the fight, and at this stage, I'm not worried about saving a minute or two considering that I'm already about six hours of in-game time into the run, but let's just move on, that's Giovanni. I don't want any thing to do with Sabrina at the moment, and look at this miraculous brisk swim down to Cinnabar where I don't use a repel, but I don't get any encounters. Maybe luck is on our side today, but I do battle all the extra trainers in the gym, and that brings us to a succula edition of Tombstoner, brother. Now let's get into Blaine. The fight isn't too bad, and it's one of the last times that Zubat's gonna get a clean one-shot victory in the run. The Growlithe has agility, and since we are poison type, that just means it's a free win. I just go through the fight without too much of a hassle, and on the Arcanine, I do get some nice luck. Bot flinches it. 
and then I get a self-inflicted confusion proc to avoid a lot of potential pitfalls and I take the fight fairly easy. And just like that, the sixth gym is down and now we're on to something that I was worried about ever since I used the randomizer to make Zubat my starter. And that's Sabrina. I've spared no expense in the extra grinding and I'm level 57 going in and I'm hoping that that can just hard carry me right here. On the Kadabra, bite is all that's needed for a one shot so I don't have to go into the recoil inducing double edge just yet. Mr. Mime is eternally easy. It does take some bites. It raises its defense with barrier but I'm able to take it out without anything bad happening so let's just move it along. Venomoth turns out to be a hassle like it tends to be on some runs. I'm just biting it but it's not a two shot and it ends up getting a hyper potion and somewhere in between there into the end of the fight it gets off two super effective side beams before I can finally take it out. It doesn't do a ton of damage but it does take me below half health and I have to use double edge at the end to give myself a shot and now it's time for the raid boss of so many runs. I do outspeed Alakazam. I go straight for the jugular with a double edge but just like the previous rival fight it barely hangs on and now it's got me a little bit worried. Luckily it just sets up reflect. There are no retroactive potions and just a little nibble from my cute little Zubat fangs finishes this one off. And when I said Blaine was one of the last few one shots, I kind of lied and I'm sorry. And there might still be more one shots in the run, but honestly, I just kind of feel bad about it. Forgive me, guys. And now there's only one gym left. I'm not too worried about it. I do battle the extra trainers inside, but do you guys ever just consistently jump over the ledge and have to retry to get to the gym over and over? I hate it. And how fast runs? I do this a lot. I generally just get off the bike to avoid the time loss, but it is what it is. I'm just going to show it. Now, now let me repeat myself for the 17th time. I should have used Mega Drain for Giovanni. I'm making a hard run even harder and on the first attempt I slowly get through the Giovanni swamp without it and the Rhydon barely hangs on and takes me out at the end. It's kind of frustrating. And then on the second attempt, I don't even make it that far. I make it to the Nidal King and it's able to finish me off because I took a bunch of chip damage getting to that point. And you would think that I would just bite the bullet and I would learn it, but I'm telling you guys, I don't know what TMs I wanted to use at this point in time. I've already used Double Edge and if I spend another valuable TM, I might need to make a swap and I'm afraid that it would make the run more difficult if I make a mistake. And as you can see, this fight is an absolute slog and it's not fun, but the main thing is that it's possible. Sure, it might take quite a while to get through the two Pokemon that resist all of my moves, but I'm just trying to exercise patience here and keep my options open for when the game actually gets really tough. Again, I admit that I probably should have learned Mega Drain here, but hindsight is 2020, and it's easy to see these little improvements when you're looking back over the footage when you've completed the run, but I digress. The 8th gym is done, we don't have to worry about it, and now it's time for some fun. But first, let's get into the appetizer before we get to the main course, and that's rival number six. The first attempt is just a slow descent into madness. And I know guys, Mega Drain would have helped on the Rhyhorn, so stop bringing it up, okay? But getting around these first few Pokemon isn't that bad. I knew I was going to do it, but this time the Execute does paralyze me. And you guys know what's going to happen when Alakazam comes in. And that's just the first attempt down. And I'm not sure what I think about it yet, so let's just kind of dive into some more. The second attempt, I go for a Confuse Ray on the Alakazam, and it just doesn't care. And it takes me out. I'm already kind of low anyway. I'm not really sure why I'm not just going straight for double edge, but maybe the past version of Matt knew something that I didn't. And then on the next attempt, I have a great run when I get to the Alakazam. I'm still not going straight double edge, but confusion procs do get me a free turn, and then the double edge damage is enough to get past it, and that's a pretty great sign. Blastoise comes in, and it's not a formality that I'm automatically just going to win, so I'm still cautious. I set up the confuse ray and all the usual stuff, and I actually just end up taking the fight on the third attempt, and that's without using Mimic yet, and we've talked about how I like to save the TMs because I didn't know what I was going to use, and the fact that I didn't have to deviate from that mindset makes it at least a pretty enjoyable victory while good times last. And guys, I say that because we've had some good times, right? Everything, we, everybody's had fun, right? The initial Brock section was really tough, but honestly, the game wasn't that bad after. It took longer than most, but I never really felt hard wall, maybe with the exception of rival number five. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that perhaps I was lulled into a sense of false security, and I thought maybe Zubat wouldn't be as bad as I thought that everybody was making it out to be, but I'm here to call out the elephant in the room. Lorelai's coming up, and our ice weakness has more or less just been brushed under the rug, since it never really comes 
comes into play until this moment. And without holding off any longer, let's just see how bad it can really be. I'm at just slightly less than 7 hours of in-game time, so I'm hoping barring an absolute disaster on the Elite Four that I can do better than Cubone. So on my first attempt, I don't use any candies, I just want to get a feel of the fight, and let's introduce everyone to Raid Boss Dugong. I do not have the damage or the means to take it out, and then when it uses res, it's just it uses it just enough to where it's always going to outpace me. It makes the fight range anywhere from extremely tedious to feeling nearly impossible, and you can see just from the footage how it's going. Maybe a low chance of a crit here or there would make it better, but you can't rely on that. But eventually I actually do chip away at it, but I do take an Aurora Beam and it does heavy damage, and that just means that Cloyster is going to come in, it's going to finish me off after ignoring my Confuse Ray, and this is a pretty bad start. On the second attempt, it goes slightly worse, if you can actually believe that. Rest is annoying, but the super effective damage just means that this one's over more quickly, and we're going to need some adjustments going forward for sure. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce, finally I can dust off that Mega Drain TM, and I should have been using it the whole time. Our place bot, our little fangs have done pretty solid throughout the run, but I just need to let go at this point. And the answer to how Mega Drain does is that it's an extremely weak and pathetic move. While the healing can be useful, it's still just as slow as the previous attempts. I'm actually able to sustain myself pretty well. I get some confused procs, and I actually take out the dugong while not being completely helpless, so I can't deny that the usefulness is coming through. And now it's time for Cloyster, and it doesn't have rest, so it's always going to go for Aurora Beam. I do get hit, and I survive in the red health, and I won't touch too much on the bullshit attack drop from Aurora Beam, but I do get it here. Cloyster does hurt itself two more times, so I get lucky, and I'm actually able to take it out as well. And the problem here is that I'm already running low on Mega Drain PP, but I guess we'll address that kind of soon. Slowbro is next, and it's it's a free win if I can make it to it. It only has Amnesia as a psychic move, and since we are graced by God to be a poison type, Generation 1 AI will always spam Amnesia, which means I can just slowly chip away with, with whatever I want. It takes a while, but free is free, and I'll take that any day of the week. The most annoying part about this fight is that my damage is really low since I got the attack drop, and Lorelei just insists on using all of her potions to make the fight extend that much longer. Slowbro is already a consistent fight. It cannot beat me. I cannot lose this fight, and from here on out, there's not much reason to show this section to save a little bit of time on my editing. But after that, our miracle run does come to a swift end on the Jinx. I confuse the Ray it. It avoids hitting itself, and Ice Punch is just the end to this one. But it was a positive improvement, so much so that since I haven't used candies yet and it's our first time making progress, I do just straight up take the white out so I can keep the experience and I'll be doing that a lot this run. So if you notice me being a little bit higher level and I don't mention it, that's why because I just straight up white out and I keep the experience. The next adjustment that I alluded to earlier is that I use three PP ups to max out Mega Drain's power points. If I want to be able to be more liberal with my uses of it, this is a must. While it could be useful in other moves, I think this is pretty much necessary considering how many times you have to use it. And on this attempt, I'm smart enough to realize that there's no point in using Mega Drain early since rest will likely be used and just renders it useless. Wing Attack actually does pretty comparable damage and I can just preserve some PP and I can use it later if I need to. In this attempt, you can see the godlike RNG if everything goes perfect. I confuse it, it hurts itself three straight turns and I just win before it does anything, that's good. And then on the cloister, the world just rebalances itself. Karma comes in and it just gets a crit and that's the end of this attempt. I do some more tries and the Jinx always ends the runs that make it this far. And after hitting level 62 and keeping the experience, it's finally time to start using some rare candies. I need to make some progress and I just, I can't waste a year on this. I want to beat Cubon. This gets us to level 69, the world's nicest level. And let's just see how that kind of changes the dynamic. And you would think that this would make a huge difference, but honestly it really doesn't. Ice damage is just going to hurt really bad no matter what level we are, and things like Wing Attack and Mega Drain are just still very weak even with all these new levels. I kind of fumble around this attempt, but the idea is that you Wing Attack until you take some damage, and then you get the full value from Mega Drain, you'll be able to heal from it as well, and eventually you'll get some confusing damage and you'll be able to take it out. We've kind of seen this one play out a few times already, it's getting a little stale. Now let's look at the Coyster once again. Mega Drain looks 
looks like it might be a range where it could be a two shot, but it doesn't quite, I don't know, it's hard to tell. So just to be safe, I do go for some chip damage for a confusion Brock and the next one does take it out. The optimal way to do this would probably be to confuse Ray first and then you just tank the Aurora Beam if it doesn't hit itself and then you'd be able to actually heal from the first Mega Drain. But overall, that's a slight adjustment. It's not too bad. Let's skip over the Slowbro and just soak in the fact that Jinx just shatters my hopes and dreams directly with a crit on the very first turn with an Ice Punch. It is what it is and I don't want to give in to any frustrations and just yet and I'm just going to keep this experience. We're going to keep chipping away at this. And guys, I failed this fight a lot. Instead of just going sequential here, I'm just going to talk about some awful aspects of the fight. The very first run killer is the fact that Aurora Beam has a chance to drop your attack and it just happens so often and while I do have Mega Drain and I can just not use my attack stat through most of the fight at least, it's really the Jinx where that's going to cripple you the most. I've spoken in other runs about how Growl can just maim an attack weighted Pokemon and while it's not exactly the same here, it does essentially make this fight near impossible. Jinx just does heavy damage and if I can't get past it in one or two turns, Ice Punch will take me out. And the fact that it was so common in the run made me just want to slap myself. Bobapedia says it has a 33.2% chance to lower the attack but it honestly felt like about a 50% chance honestly. I hate it. Let's move on. The second thing is critical hits. Everyone's favorite. Lorelai just loves the crit and it's honestly crazy how many runs are ended by just being smashed for a million points of super effective damage. And here's a bonus clip of Lapras which we haven't even seen yet. Just using Blizzard to crit and it would be enough to probably kill every Zubat in the Kanto region. Cool. Very cool. Now let's jump ahead to the win condition. And if you avoid the annoying attack drops, you avoid the crits, you can actually get past the Jinx at this level. A confusion proc into a double edge is enough to get it into potion range and then you can just finish it off after that. Unfortunately Lapras is waiting for you at the end and you need some supreme luck because on my first time making it here, I get oh so close and it, all it takes is just one blizzard to end things. Blizzard in general is pretty overpowered and sometimes the crit's just not even needed but this one was pretty tough. So let's just be thorough here and show Jinx another time. It's the same strategy. Get a confusion proc but this time we see that double edge at level 70 is a range and it can actually take it down without relying on getting a potion from Lorelai and we've talked about it before but obviously Lapras is just gonna crit me with Blizzard and that ends the attempt. I'm loving it. So let's dive into Lapras a little bit here and we've we've done the run guys. It's extremely bulky. We know Lapras and I really want you guys to soak this attempt in. Soak in the footage. I'm getting everything to go my way at level 73. It's hurting itself. I'm chunking it down big time but the game just straight up decides and it just says no Matt you are not winning this battle yet and I get 100 to 0 with a blizzard crit and my tenfold hat theory here is that Lorelai has about a 50% chance to crit and it's pretty crazy I'm telling you. Now let's take things back just a little bit. We're looking at level 74. Things get a lot better. If you avoid the annoying bits of the fight this is where double edge is always a one shot. You outspeed the jinx so it's just a guaranteed thing and that makes this fight slightly more consistent. And in this attempt, I finally break through. I do end up tanking a blizzard, and that's pretty good, but I cannot deny the luck involved here to eventually just chip it down and get my first Lorelai victory. It's important to note that this fight is far from being consistent, and I may come back to this one a time or two just to show what I mean, but being able to get past means that now I can finally get even more experience, and that's a pretty monumental victory in itself, so let's pat ourselves on the back. Now it's time for Bruno. No one's surprised about what I'm about to say, and I'm wondering if I even need to put it into words. And I will just say that I have Mega Drain for the Onyx, I have Wing Attack for the Fighting Types, I'm a Poison Flying Type, I double resist fighting, and I really don't think I need to be an already extremely dead horse. Bruno's just irrelevant as always, and everyone just thank Bruno for saving me some editing time by being awful. And let's just move ahead, shall we? That's it, that's all we got to say. Now it's time for Agatha. I don't have access to Psychic or Ground moves since Zubat has the most shallow move pool ever, so how bad can this one really be? And the answer is really bad. Absolute worst case scenario on the first attempt. Wing Attack does do respectable damage and that's a positive, but I just get put to sleep, I get Dream Eater, I get a Nightshade, and it's just extremely fast, it's over with. I go in for another level 74 try. And this one's much better. If you avoid hypnosis and maybe get a confused proc, wing attacks are sufficient to nuke it down. 
You really can't ask much more from Zubat, and this is pretty good news. Our big brother Golbat is up next, and I'm just gonna try to confuse it and go with the usual strategies. I try out Mega Drain for some reason, uh, just to get some health back, but I should know better. It's already weak, and then it's double resisted on top of that. There's just no point. I do avoid most of the damage, and while Double Edge could have gotten me through this part faster, I did want to preserve some health, and I'm two Pokemon deep into Agatha. Hunter comes in, and you know the drill already, guys. Confuse Ray, let's see what happens. It does hurt itself one time, it misses the hypnosis on the other, and wing attack quickly gets us past, and while I am getting a little bit low on health, I'm actually kind of wondering if I could just make it past Agatha on the first attempt. Arbok comes in, and I do make it past it, spoiler alert. I go for resisted Mega Drains, just kind of hoping that I can recover some health, but letting it just get free turns means that eventually I get paralyzed, and then I get knocked all the way down to 13 health. I enjoy being the underdog, and I'm hoping for the best case scenario, but unfortunately, I'm in a very deep hole here, and our wings aren't enough to fly out of this one. It goes for a worthless Dream Eater, and it gives me some false sense of hope, but a Nightshade is more than enough to end this attempt, but it was a pretty great shot. And since it was my first really deep run, I definitely need to keep the experience here. And now let's briefly go back to Lorelei. I need to reiterate that this fight is not consistent. Even the higher you get, it just stays inconsistent. I need to go back and touch on it. I fail lots of times. We'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, every wideout, I do keep the experience. I can essentially make it to the Lapras every single time, and that's pretty decent. But whether or not it's a blizzard critting, or maybe a back-to-back -back blizzard, or some bad luck or something earlier in the fight happening. It's just a very easy battle to still lose, but you know I'm keeping that experience though because even when Zubat's losing, I'm still progressing. And I'm not embarrassed to admit that it takes me another whopping nine times just on this attempt right here. It takes me nine times to finally get through Lorelei again, and it takes me up to a level 78 to do it again, and it's still not consistent. And I cannot stress enough that this fight is never ever gonna be consistent. This is just the reality of the world and all we can do, all Zubat can do is learn how to live in it, but let's move on. And guys, I'm pleased to announce that the extra levels smooths out the Agatha fight just a little bit. The strategy's overall the same, but I do learn from my mistakes and I'm a bit more aggressive in some areas while not doing dumb shit like using double resisted mega drains in a futile attempt to get back some health. Overall, this is actually a pretty dominant fight and the main adjustment here is that on the Haunter, I'm just calling it's bluff. I'm not going to use Confuse Ray. I'm going straight wing attack. Do what you want to me, but you're not going to do it. You're not going to hypnosis. I'm calling the bluff. The gambit works out, and since I don't fear the Arbok outside of maybe paralysis, I just do the same here, and I eventually make it to the end. And on the final Gengar, I'm at a pretty nice health total, and once again, I'm not using Confuse Ray, and this time it's more calculated. Because you see, this Gengar, it knows Toxic, which I'm immune to, Dream Eater, which it has no way to utilize, Confuse Ray, which is just a 50-50 chance to do some tiny damage, and Nightshade, which will do 60 damage since it's level 60. This means there's a good chance that this Gengar will just waste its turns anyway, and even if it does use Nightshade, I'm healthy enough to where I can comfortably survive two of them, and I think that I could outpace it even if the AI made the best possible choices, which it never will. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Gengar's dead. And that's the fight. I'm happy with it. Now there's a lull in the action with Lance, but before we get into that, it's time to learn Min. I do replace Mega Drain, and that's just problematic for one reason, because it mainly means that I cannot keep the experience here, but I do just want to gauge these last fights before I worry about anything like that. If I did keep the experience, it means that I'd have to do Lorelei without Mega Drain, and that's just gonna be a no from me, dog. First, let's dive into Lance and just go over Gyarados real quick. Maybe something like a Hyper Beam or a Hydro Pump crit could just end the run, but Wing Attack does pretty decent damage, and Double Edge does even more if I need it. In this attempt, uh, I just get a confusion proc and I can just finish it off really easy but longtime viewers of my channel and maybe bigger channels might know how this fight goes if you are a poison type. Outside of Aerodactyl you really can't lose this fight just because how the AI works they're always going to spam agility and barrier and stuff so in this attempt I do mimic agility that gives me a little bit more insurance on the Aerodactyl and it's just extremely easy while double edge is resisted by Aerodactyl's rock typing three turns of attack badge boosting makes it pretty easy and that's essentially the one 
small hang up in this fight outside of maybe getting some bad luck on Gyarados. So there's no need to talk about it. It's a pretty free fight. Now let's talk about the champion fight. Let's talk about the hurdles and the trials that's going to be contained here because there's another spoiler alert for you. Uh, this one's gonna, not going to be a one shot if you can believe that. Versus Pidgeot and we won't be covering this one too often unless it goes off on me but you guys probably can pause the video and, and say the strategy at this point before you even hear me say it. Uh, we're going to confuse Ray and we're going to just wing attack baby. If it hits itself that means I avoid even more damage and it's generally just a matter of time before this one is done. I do take some decent damage but I'm on to more pressing problems and that would be Alakazam and you might be surprised that I outspeed it and I could just go for double edge to quickly one shot it and move on which is fantastic news but you would think that this would be the main problem and we'll come back to this because I don't use this strategy the whole time. Next is Rhydon and this is one of those cases where replacing Mega Drain actually hurts you. While it's a very slow very offensively weak Pokemon I only have resisted damage and I've already taken some damage earlier so I find myself at about half health before I get through this slog. It takes a long time to get through this one and seriously it's about like a two minute fight. Triple C Thick Arcanine is next and I get pretty fortunate here. I do a Confuse Ray. It hurts itself a little bit. Then I get some decent damage with Bling Attack and that just gets me through this one unscathed so that's good. And here's another slight problem. I'm running Mimic and here I'm thinking my best hope was to maybe take Hypnosis from the Executor and I do that but it simply just puts me to sleep and from there it just stomps my ass into the ground and while it wasn't the worst attempt ever I do have to do everything again. I reset and after failing Lorelei several more times let's look at some of the adjustments here. The big one and a very scary one here is that I think I have to mimic recover on Alakazam. This means I'm opening myself up to some heavy damage and relying on that 50-50 confusion proc just isn't ideal. I actually get very lucky here. It hurts itself twice. I do get recover and then I take it out. Now skipping ahead a little bit, Arcanine does do some extreme heavy damage with takedown since my defense was lowered and it takes me to very low health but this is where recover starts to pay dividends and now the bad part is that you don't want to be this low and have to waste turns on executor because its sole purpose in life is just to put you to sleep and beat your ass. I recover, I do avoid sleep and I hit some huge damage with wing attack and that gets a full restore. This one might have been doable but I don't think I mentioned that back in the Rhyhorn part that I skipped over. I got tail whipped and leered a lot so while my defense was lowered all you need to know is just look how much damage barrage does. I love getting beat by barrage. It feels so good. And we could sit here for about three hours if you guys really wanted to see everything but we have to move it along. The awful part here is that there are about a dozen attempts where the RNG required to get past Alakazam just doesn't work and it alone takes me out. Keep in mind how tedious this is when you consider that I have to go through the entire Elite Four again and Lorelai still isn't guaranteed, Agatha's not 100% guaranteed, and then rarely even Lance's Gyarados can just take you out itself. And on top of that, you have to replace Mega Drain with Mimic each time you make it here. But this is all part of the process of learning what works and one of these bad runs and I know the do. I've been through it before, but I just want you guys to know it's very time consuming. Eventually I do get a pretty great attempt. I find myself at Executor, and I also wonder if I've been saying Execute. Forgive me if I have. And I'm able to get it down while still being at full health, and we get our first look at Blastoise. Now, the turtle in the room here is that Blastoise knows Blizzard, and what ends up happening here is that it hits a Blizzard, and while I do have Confuse Ray, I'm just spending the majority of my turns using Recover. I'm barely scraping by. I can't keep it up. This means I have no room to go on the offensive and eventually it is going to outpace me and that's what it does. It takes me out. It didn't feel great. I would say that this attempt felt like drowning. So a new strategy emerges. One born of desperation seeing how the Blastoise fight just went and my friends that's toxic. I have never used toxic in any of my runs but simply put it's not that great. Most Pokemon have better moves but not Zubat. I do lose that double edge damage on Alakazam but let's see if we can kind of adjust and obviously I'm going to make a mistake on my first Alakazam attempt. I want to take recover so I can get this pseudo stall type strategy I want to get going on but I should definitely poison the Alakazam first. It gets off heavy damage but after it hits itself I'm able to stabilize a little bit and although it does have reflect up, wing attack along with toxic can take it out. It's not great but it worked the first time so that's pretty good. Now let's talk about Rhyhorn and Arcanine. We are really deep into this video and I'm sure there are like 10 of you still hanging out but these guys are more or less consistent. There's no need to continue showing them and if you've seen one attempt you've pretty much seen them all and even if things don't go perfect for me I do have recover so let's just sacrifice the remaining footage to the editing gods and hope that we can maybe get this video done in less than an hour. Top uh, praise the editing god down below so I know you made it here. Now for the second interesting part of the fight. Executor pisses me
pisses me off like no other. And I make another mistake that I'll adjust to here. Although this one does go pretty well, actually. I should get Toxic up first, tank whatever annoying damage I can while I'm asleep and all that. Then I can just recover it back before the final Pokemon. But that's just a perfect scenario, and things aren't always perfect. I'm far from it. And in this attempt, Wing Attack is really all that you need, but it's not quite strong enough. But overall, this is about as good of a try as going to get. Now let's look at the Blast Toys to see if our cowardly strategy will pay off. It's tailor made for this moment, and wouldn't you know it, I just I missed the Toxic. Blast Toys then does supreme damage with Blizzard, and just like that, I'm just really behind the curve, and I don't think I can pull this one off. I need a Hail Mary Confuse Ray to put in some work, but it doesn't, and Blizzard takes me out soon after. And guys, this fight sucks dick. There's no two ways about it. There's no PG way to say it. Bad luck is a very common theme, and if you aren't getting blasted by the Alakazam, maybe tickled to death by Executor, or maybe getting some bullshit frozen proc on the Blastoise, you might be alright, but that never happens. Eventually, I concede that I will have to sacrifice some more time and level up more, and let's just pick back up at level 86 and talk about why I chose that as my stopping point. Outside of it being one level lower than Cubone's time, it's not going to matter if you're level 99, Alakazam could just kill you no matter what. But the key part here is that level 86 makes the Executor more consistent. I opt to go for the Poison Strat on this run, and after it kind of tires itself out from putting me to sleep and using Barrage, I can recover and be in the best possible position going into the Blastoise. And I'm praying to God to give me the sweet release from this cursed run. Turn one toxic. It connects. Great. I take a blizzard, but it doesn't crit. I use a confused ray. It doesn't hit itself. And I got a little meat on my bones here at level 86. I can tank two of them. Toxic is starting to rack up and I'm spamming recover as much as I can, but blizzard eventually crits. But I do survive at 19 hit points and we are getting close to the range where poison will win this to fight if we can hold on for maybe another turn or two. And this is the part where you might expect me to go, Zubat has done it. But honestly, this part just made me actually kind of sad. When it's one turn from dying, it hits a frozen proc from Blizzard, and all I can do is just sit here and stare at the screen after I've put in so much work in the run, knowing that I'm going to have to go back and do Lorelai, do Agatha, and just do everything all over again. And this part was specifically disheartening, and from the bottom of my heart, the AI can go fuck itself. This was the most cheaty thing I've ever seen in any of my solo runs from it, and it made me really salty. And from this point, I would just like to greatly emphasize not just how annoying the Elite Four is for this run, but I want to put a spotlight on how consistently bad Zubat is. And I'm just going to show clip after clip after clip of me failing on the champion fight, but I want you guys to know that for every two or three champion failures, there was a Blizzard crit on Lorelai, or maybe a turn one hypnosis into a Dream Eater on Agatha. And I did go back, I watched the Cubon video, and it took me 45 attempts to get past Lorelai, but after that, and finally dealing with Gyarados, there really wasn't any extraordinary struggle since I had to get to level 87, and for most Pokemon, that means that things get easier. But with Zubat, one little stumble, and there are probably about 35 different scenarios in the run that can just end it, because you have such an awful move pool, and you have zero redeeming qualities. Confuse Ray is by far its best move, and just by nature, it's a straight up luck based move, and that's the reason why I have the rule that you can't save between Elite Four members. I want to promote this consistent strategy and reward Pokemon for being solid for just five straight battles and this my friends is Zubat's biggest failure. It's not consistent at all and I'd be willing to bet that even if I broke my rules and I saved right before the champion fight I'd still be sitting here for about an hour hoping that everything falls into my lap perfect because this frail little bat is the textbook definition of awful. And as we are getting closer and closer to the end of this gargantuan length video I just need to tell you guys how frustrating it was and just how many attempts it had to take. It had to be close to a hundred. I sometimes half seriously talk about things being the worst video game experiences like when Eevee had to get past the Gastly's, but Zubat's Elite Four run is truly one of the most frustrating and tedious things I've ever had to sit through. And I'll talk about just how bad Zubat is at the end a little bit and where I think it ranks overall, but guys just enjoy all the failures going on in the background. And I think it's about that time I just talk about what had to finally happen to get things right. And some of you might be thinking, Matt, why didn't you just keep leveling up? And to that I say it's because, mostly because I'm stubborn. I never want a Pokemon to be the worst, and I do try my best to get the most out of each run, and for some arbitrary reason, I wanted Zubat to get less time and to beat the game at a lower level than Cubone, my current worst run. Sure, things would have been easier if I would have just went up to level 90, but I would have had like an 11 hour time, and I just refused to have that happen, so here we are. And let's just tune into the final attempt, uh, because I just ranted for like two minutes straight. Alright, so let's touch on the one success 
unsuccessful attempt. Alakazam the Raid Boss doesn't actually need to go perfect, but a turn 1 Confuse Ray into hurting itself is the best start. Then it's crucial to take recover. From there, sometimes I wing attack, but this time I go for Toxic. Now it's on the clock, and things are going even better when it hurts itself for the second time. The next turn I finally do take recover, and once again Alakazam hits itself. And honestly, getting this lucky makes me worried that I won't get that luck later, but this is a perfect fight. Now let's pick up where the next potential pitfall would be, and that's Executor. With recover, I have insurance, but it does hit itself on the first turn. I go for a wing attack for heavy damage, it hurts itself again, and I take it out. Another absolutely perfect setup here. But it's the blast toys that worries me, and that's the reason we're using Toxic right now. Turn 1, I go for Toxic. I need that clock to start ticking, and it does connect. It goes for a blizzard, and it does heavy damage, so I'm forced to use recover on the next turn, or I would just be dead. The next turn it goes for another blizzard, and I finally get it to miss, and this is exactly what I needed to see. This gives me a free turn to use Confuse Ray, and then it hits itself, and by this point, Toxic is starting to rack up, and when it's all said and done, I end up tanking a Blizzard, and it's kind of in the range where I can just start going for straight wing attacks to finally end this nightmare. I can't, the sense of elation and the weight off my shoulders, it's just been lifted. It feels fantastic, and Zubat has done it, but at what cost to my well-being? How long will I carry this in my mind? Who knows? This run was not the best, and I do have some closing thoughts, but I think that maybe we should just go ahead and look at the level and the time and get that out of the way first. Zubat finishes with a level of 86 and I'm able to squeak through with a time of 8 hours and 52 minutes. And quickly I just want to bring up the last pre-evolved tier list real quick and talk about a decision that I'm going to make in a minute. Let's take a look at Cubone for a second. 9 hours and 30 minutes, a level of 87, and it's technically worse by 38 minutes and a level higher. But let me defend that bad run for a second. That was my third solo run ever and I'll just be honest, I wasn't as good at the game. I didn't know the best routes. I didn't know every possible optimization and I didn't even know some of the time saves at that point. And on top of that, I'm pretty sure my Cubone just had awful stats, whereas the Zubat had perfect IVs, 15 down the board. And I've just, I've sit down and I've thought about this for a while. And for the longest time, I was kind of at a standstill of which Pokemon's actually worse. But at the end of the day, I think I could probably redo the Cubone run and potentially have like an eight hour time. And if I had better IVs, I think I could probably do it at a lower level as well. On top of that, Cubone struggled in a few places, yeah sure. Misty, Lorelai, Lance's Gyarados, those were pretty big hassles, but that was it. Zubat struggled in a lot of places, uh, Brock, Rifle Number 5, Lorelai, Agatha, and had the worst champion fight in the history of my solo runs, and I still barely made it through. So today, I think taking a step back and reviewing all of the data, and taking into account the time differences between the two runs, I just, I have no choice but to proclaim that Zubat is by far the worst Pokemon that I've ever done. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that I'm confident that only Weedle can be worse, and I don't think I'm ever going to do the Weedle run. Seriously guys, don't try the Weedle run yourself. But that's it for me. I'm mentally exhausted. This video was an incredibly long run, and while I have it started the next challenge, it doesn't look like it's going to be a walk in the park either. So that sounds like fun. I have some requests lined up, and I need to get to that. Uh, but you guys are great. I appreciate you if you're still here. And I'm about spent. Needless to say, I'm glad that this one is over. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.